part 1, we talked about the way how early humans interacted with horses. The horse was regarded as food and was presented in cave art and sculpture art. It is just because of such fascination with this animal that eventually led to the domestication of horses. Several hypotheses exist on many of the key issues regarding the domestication of the horse. Although the various Paleolithic signs we have just mentioned indicate that humans had a profound interaction with horses at that time. These were truly wild horses and were hunted for meat. So now we need to review the definition of domestication. Some zoologists define domestication as human control over breeding. Archaeological evidence indicates that the domestication of horses had taken place approximately 6,000 years ago, in the steppe lands north of the Black Sea from Ukraine to Kazakhstan. Despite intensive study over a long period of time, many questions remain about the early development of the species as it underwent domestication. One crucial question involves whether domestication was limited to a single location or occurred in multiple areas. To trace the history of the earliest human domestication of horses, scientists have studied the DNA mitochondria of ancient horse remains. The mtDNA data indicated that there were multiple sites of domestication, with a large number of mares in the first populations, and that genetic input from local wild horses, had been introduced into the domestic gene pool as domesticated horses spread. The mtDNA data also showed that the modern horse is a mixture of ancient lineages, all of which can be traced back to an ancestral mare, which lived 130,000 to 160,000 years ago. Thus, there is no clear mtDNA signature for modern horse breeds. Different scholars have different disagreements on the origin of domestic horses. Here we use the theoretical assumptions put forward by James Kosar Ewart in Scotland, and Johann Ulrich Durst in Germany as a reference. That three of these are generally credited as being the ancestral stock of the domestic horse. They are Shavalsky's horse from Central Asia, the Tarpon from Eastern Europe and the Ukrainian steppes, and the forest horse of Northern Europe. When it comes to Shavalsky's horses, we must focus on a region located in what is now northern Kazakhstan 6,000 years ago, the village of Batai. At the Batai site, archaeologists have found numerous horse bones, harpoons made from horse bones, and horse bones with symbolic carvings. By testing the pottery pieces unearthed at the site, it was found that there were residues of horse milk fatty acids on the pottery pieces which proved that the Batai people at that time both ate horse meat and drank horse milk. In addition, horse dung was also found in the cultural layer of the site, which is also evidence of the long-term survival of horses here. Therefore, zoo archaeologists speculate that the Batai people at that time, had begun to domesticate horses and could raise horses. According to some scholars, Batai's horses are the ancestors of Shavalsky's horses, Domestic horses and horse breeding techniques spread to other regions, after these horses were successfully domesticated in Kazakhstan. However, different voices questioned that Shavalsky's horse was different from modern horses before domestication, because it had 66 chromosomes, whereas modern domestic horses had 64. Modern Shavalsky's horses are descended from Eurasia a distinct regional gene pool in the eastern prairie, rather than the same genome that gave rise to modern domesticated horses. As a result, some taxonomists consider the Shavalsky's horse to be a distinct species, rather than a subspecies of domestic horses. Another ancestor thought to be the domestic horse is the tarpon. The original tarpon was an extinct horse subspecies scientifically known as Equus ferris ferris inhabits the entire land from Western Europe to Alaska, as well as parts of Eastern Europe and the Eurasian steppe. Tarpons, also known as Eurasian wild horses, are believed to have been first domesticated in Russia around 3000 BC. Although their influence on modern horses is controversial, there is strong evidence that many European and Russian breeds are developed from domesticated tarpons. As the human population of Europe grew, 
farming became the typical means of survival, and the tarpon's habitat gradually shrunk. They were also hunted, both as a food source and to prevent them from competing with domesticated livestock for food and water. Tarpons were also known for damaging crops and stealing and interbreeding with tamed mares, resulting in undesirable foals. Interbreeding was another major reason the tarpon died out, by the 1800s when tarpons were on the verge of extinction, most remaining specimens were likely hybrids. The last wild tarpon herds were killed in the mid-1800s by farmers, who considered them pests. The last individual believed to be a tarpon died in captivity in the Russian Empire in 1909. This was the only tarpon to be photographed, 1884. Shortly after tarpon became extinct, efforts were made in Poland to preserve the primitive hybrids which had survived in the hands of local peasants, and still had many tarpon characteristics. Known as Konik horses. The Konik is thriving not only in Poland, but in nature reserves in many other European countries. But the Konik is far from the only modern tarpon. The third domestic horse ancestor is the forest horse, also known as the warm-blooded horse or the Deluvia horse. It was a large-boned, slow-moving, heavy horse with broad hooves that enabled it to live in the widespread swampy area of Europe, and its coat was thick and strong, possibly marked for camouflage. It is the ancestor of some of the older heavy horse breeds such as the Arden. Scholars have attempted to decipher the code of horse ancestors through a variety of methods, including archaeology and genetic research. We've seen how these ancestors' fates differed greatly. Tarpon and the forest horse became extinct as human society advanced, and the Chevalsky's horse is lucky to survive today. Human beings, as the most advanced intelligent organism on the planet, have introduced challenges and threats to the life and living environments of other organisms. This has prompted us to consider whether humans must infringe on the interests of other species to survive. What is the boundary between survival and development? Thank you for watching, we are committed to helping people know more about the world by sharing knowledge of the horse and history. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.